thanks again to Archie and Fidelma for introducing my talk, um, which is about improving the diagnosis of serious bacterial infection. And I work in children. I'm a pediatric infectious diseases consultant. Um, but as Fidelma has illustrated, it's the same problem in adults. And Archie's story illustrates why, why what inspires me to do the work I do, which is trying to uh, develop diagnostics early on before uh, the infection gets difficult to treat, uh, as Fidelma pointed out in her slide. So uh, I don't need to give this background because Fidelma's already given a very eloquent background to sepsis, but it is a problem worldwide. Uh, and worldwide, uh, over 6 million children and neonates die every year. So it's a, a, a lot of children and neonates dying from infection. Uh, in the UK, we also have a significant burden of infection uh, and mortality uh, is up to 50%. Uh, the worrying thing is that incidence is ri rising, as we saw from Fidelma's slide, because of an increasingly aging population, antibiotic resistance, uh, and also more survival from treatments with cancer and new biological therapies. So we've already heard that uh, sepsis is a medical emergency, but why aren't we recognizing it early? because diagnostic tools are inadequate. So uh, my research over the last few years has focused on trying to identify biomarkers of infection that could pick up infection early. Uh, and some work we did on children in Malawi, we identified a combination of three biomarkers which in our work in Malawi appeared to improve the diagnosis over existing biomarkers. And that was published in 2012. Subsequently, when I came back to the UK, um, I um, worked together with two industry partners and we were funded uh, to work on a, a project to develop a, a point of care diagnostic for infection. This was a lateral flow diagnostic, which is a bit like a pregnancy test. This was funded by the Technology Strategy Board. And here's just a simple schematic of what we were trying to do. So this is a lateral flow. Uh, like I said, it's like a pregnancy test. Uh, and on the left-hand side, uh, here is where you put your sample. The, uh, the, the pad is sprayed with antibodies, and in this example, you can test up to three markers, uh, and then you have a control line. Uh, and if there is no biomarker in your test, this is a negative test, and that's a positive test. And what we were hoping to do was to put three markers on this test so that uh, with a simple finger prick sample, you could say this was a, there was a, a likelihood of infection there. Uh, and so this is what we did. Uh, as you can see, the top one is our first biomarker, NGAL, PCT and resistance. So this is just looking from the side. We, uh, we, we fix these antibodies to the first part of the pad. And then these are the reader antibodies, the reporter antibodies. And your sample moves along this way. And that's what it looks like from the top. And this is what it looks like when it's housed in the case. Uh, and initially, we then tried to see whether the uh, uh, devices uh, could detect these biomarkers. And we used spice samples, spiked samples. So we put uh, the biomarker in normal human plasma. And we showed there are quite good uh, correlations in spiked samples. Then we tried to use clinical samples, which is samples from patients with sepsis. Uh, and, and then we hit some problems, because we, we then couldn't find these correlations in clinical samples. Uh, we had a lot of cross-reactivity with antibodies, and therefore we were unable to multiplex and put them all on the same device. Uh, at the same time, we were also doing some clinical evaluation on children in, in Liverpool, and we found that that combination of biomarkers did not discriminate sepsis as well as it had done in the Malawi population. So we, we went back to try and optimize the biomarkers. It also led us to look for alternative recognition model molecules instead of antibodies uh, and, and to, to think about putting it on an electrochemical test as opposed to lateral flow. And then we came across another company that makes these artificial antibodies called Aphimas. Uh, and uh, our aim now is to try and put these uh, uh, new biomarkers onto a gold electrode. So uh, Evacta, the company that make these artificial antibodies, and they're here today, I think they were meant to have a stand, but they don't. But they're sitting in the middle, um, and they're just waving now. So if you want to talk to them during the break, you can see them. And they've got cards on the table here. Uh, and um, Professor Koferengo, um, who is the chief scientific officer, was one of the people that developed this 
uh, Afima, which is based on a protein scaffold and, and actually functions just like an antibody. So if you know what an antibody looks like, this is an artificial antibody which has improved recognition of targets. And so our idea is that um, we will use these aphimers uh, and put them on a, on a gold electrode uh, to identify our biomarkers in the clinical samples for the detection of infection. And what this schematic shows is that if you, this is an, an antibody and you can see the antibody is large uh, and causes increased charge. And also because of the bulk of the antibody, it's difficult for uh, your redox agents or any other agents to get the electrode. Whereas with an aphima, it's much smaller, and therefore there's lots bigger gaps, uh, which makes your, your binding to the electrode much more responsive uh, and much more sensitive. Uh, this is another schematic here, uh, and this is uh, some aphimas, and this is a schematic of an aphima scaffold. And if you bind to your biomarker, which is your mark of infection in your sample, and then if you attach that to a reporter molecule, something that lights up or something that gives a signal, then you get a measurement of an electrical potential and you get a result on a device like this that says uh, biomarker X are high, this is early infection, call a senior doctor, think sepsis. And that's how it links into what both Archie and Fidelma have been talking about today. So we would hope that uh, together with our industry partners, we'd be able to get a finger prick test, a very quick result, that could be done in the emergency department or even in primary care, which might give a qualitative or quantitative reading, uh, which can also be communicated via um, uh, an app or a, a wirelessly to, to a doctor or hospital so that decisions can be made to treat. So this is the recognition, uh, resuscitate and respond. And that's all I have to say. <laughs>